So I want to talk first, you know, we always mention conflicts of interest in, in talks, and I want to make sure to mention that I have none. As we watch an example of chiropractic, oh, sorry, chiropractic, eh, Harriet, you have it on the mind, of acupuncture, um, and what's fascinating about this is the, the sterile technique that's being used. Um, I'm an infectious disease doctor by training, and, and this just gives me the wheelies to watch the sticking of the needles with the skin. Ah, oh, it's just so terrible. And as the sign says, you know, you don't even do it on your own face if you're doing chiropractic. Because I tend to see the world like this. I think you're all filthy. You're all a repulsive bunch of people. And I don't know why any of us would kiss our significant other if we actually knew what was in the mouths of each other. But this is how I see people. And this is why it drives me nuts when you see pictures of, of, um, of uh, I don't have a pointer. When you see pictures of acupuncture and she's sticking the needles without using any gloves, this is in Portland at the, Nash, at the National Naturopathic Clinic. If you look in the upper right-hand corner, you see two boxes of gloves up there. I mean, it's not like there must be, you know, like it's, you should be using those when you use your acupuncture. But anyway, that's not the topic I'm talking about. This is going to be some um, 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 other topic. I, I tend to digress. And, you saw some of these earlier. You all know how acupuncture works, or supposedly works, that there's an energy that flows through meridians, and by blocking the meridians, you then get ill, and by unblocking them, you do better. We all know this theory. David mentioned this. We all, we, as I told him as he left, he stole all my slides. Um, <clears throat> there's just so many you can use. And that's the Chinese version. I tend to use this one, because I think it's more appropriate. <clears throat> Unfortunately, uh, Kenny's dead. He died of a heart valve infection. Those bastards killed Kenny. But that's the better way of thinking about the theory of acupuncture. But when you talk about acupunctures, there's actually which one? Because there are a lot of acupunctures. There's probably as many acupunctures as there is practitioners. There's Chinese, there's Japanese, there's ear acupuncture, there's hand acupuncture, there's tongue acupuncture, there's electro acupuncture. There are so many different forms of acupuncture that it boggles the mind. Everything mapped to a different part of the body. It's amazing how many different forms there are. So when they say acupuncture works, you always have to wonder which acupuncture are they talking about. There are so, and boy, you have to have a strong uh, lack of sense of nose or smell to do that particular form of acupuncture. And you can see mapping like this is very popular and as, uh, for finding things, including the various forms of acupuncture. And David stole my slide, so I'll just skip by this one right away. But there are so many forms of acupuncture I think it's important to go through. They have the, uh, I pronounced my Japanese wrong, the Rodokaru, how's that for my Japanese pronunciation, that uses a neurometer. They went on to form Scientology, I think, later. Um, there's motion style acupuncture. The Wan Li is a great one at the bottom. It has little, uh, the end of the acupuncture has a hook on it, and they use it for pulling pieces of tissue out of you while they do it. It's a very spooky kind. There's laser acupuncture. There's electro acupuncture. The Portland Trailblazers, my team, go Blazers, uh, they all use moxibustion. And if you watch the Blazers play, you'll see bruises on their back. Um, from using moxibustion as part of their acupuncture treatment. I wonder what the regulating marrow C acupuncture is. It sounds very interesting if you have, I don't know, an anemone illness or something. But these are more forms of acupuncture. There are the uh, ac wrist um, ankle acupuncture where they only put things in the wrist and the ankles. Or Dr. Hua Shi Ping's, he uses golden needles, so it must be better if it's golden needles. I personally like the last of the bottom, Dr. Wu Zhu's form of acupuncture. It's assisted by the middle finger. I understand that one. I could not drive if I did not have a middle finger to assist me. So that's a very important form of acupuncture. You have music acupuncture, which is like a cleansing quantum shower. You know, I have a quantum shower box for my cat. Uh, I still don't know if it's clean yet or not. There's bee venom acupuncture and cat gat acupuncture. There is red hot fire acupuncture where they heat it up red hot and inject the needle while it's still glowing. But to my surprise, I could not find any ice acupuncture. So there are just an enormous number of forms of acupuncture. When they say acupuncture works, which one are they talking about? I really like the wrong, wrong tin. <laughs> you know, the tong rin. I got it right the first time. Acupuncture where you have a little 
a homunculus, a little voodoo doll, and you bang on it with a silver hammer to make you better. And you get videos of adults banging on their acupuncture uh, meridians on a doll to feel better. So there's as many forms of acupuncture as there are acupuncturists. And so when someone says, well, acupuncture works, I always want to know, well, what form of acupuncture are you talking about? Who's acupuncture? Who's style? It's like the old kung fu movies I used to like to go watch in high school where there's one school battling another school. Which one is it? I think this is the most interesting real study of acupuncture because they compared acupuncture to fake acupuncture. And the fake acupuncture, and that's being redundant, I know, is twirling toothpicks on the skin. And they found that twirling toothpicks on the skin was just as good as using needles. So the sham acupuncture of twirl, twirling toothpicks, toy boat, toy boat, was just as good as relieving pain as was real acupuncture. So when they say acupuncture works, well, it works as well as toothpicks does. Most people would say, well, if your acupuncture is no better than placebo, if your therapy is no better than placebo, then it doesn't work. However, in this study, everybody looked at it and said, oh my goodness, acupuncture works as well as toothpicks. Therefore, acupuncture works, which is the weirdest, the weirdest interpretation of a study that I have yet to see. It's weird when you read the literature about acupuncture and you read the studies, you'll see study after study that says, you know, acupuncture works. Acupuncture is compared to placebo. It's as good as placebo and it's effective. Therefore, acupuncture is... That's the rationale you get. And you can see that they looked at this and found that the, the bias to all the response to this particular study showed that there was a lack of understanding of the placebo effect. You think, but you see this all the time in the acupuncture literature when they talk about whether or not acupuncture works because they say, well, they have acupuncture, they got placebo, in this case, toothpicks, and when compared to usual care, it's better. And so they found this equal to placebo, therefore it works, which is an amazing way to interpret the medical literature. So as I say, there really are as many acupunctures as there are practitioners and styles, each and every one of the ones I mentioned. And I've counted well over 50 different styles of acupuncture, new ones coming out all the time in the literature, and they're all effective for the treatments that they're being used for if that's a grammatically correct sentence. And so when you say acupuncture works, well, they all work, or they all don't work. It doesn't really matter. And the other interesting thing about acupuncture is the number of acupuncture points that you see, which is a curiosity. Classically, there were 365 acupuncture points, well, maybe 364 and a quarter. But there's one for each day of the year. But you also figured that there are also other acupuncture points that are off the meridians that they call extraordinary points. And there's a third category of that points called the Ashi points, which have no fixed location. So you could basically pick a point anywhere and stick a needle in it. So basically every place on the human body could potentially be an acupuncture, acupuncture point. Like that. <laughs> Except, well, fortunately, there are no acupuncture points under the nail beds. There are no acupuncture points in the eyes. And guess what? There are no acupuncture points on the male genitalia, which I've always found it ironic that the life-generating organ, one of two, doesn't have any life-generating energy flowing through it, <laughs> which is a curiosity about acupuncture. You'd think if we had points everywhere, there'd be some there, but there aren't, which is probably, and you can guess why. Which is why when you look at what acupuncture is used for around the world, it works for virtually everything. In the WHO, not the WHO, the WHO, the WHO is a band. In the WHO, they even have a curing blindness, which was quite remarkable. But it's actually used around the world and found to be effective for everything, except birth control. <laughs> which I've also found a curiosity about acupuncture. You can make people pregnant with acupuncture, but you can't prevent it with acupuncture, which I always have found to be a curiosity. So, and generally speaking, which is also interesting about the whole uh, pseudo-medicine world, there is no alternative acupuncture. And I think we have six billion people on the planet as proof of enough of that statement. I think acupuncture could be used as a form of birth con... No. We won't go there. <laughs> so 
it doesn't matter where the needles are placed. It doesn't matter what style is used. It doesn't matter even if needles are used, you get efficacy from acupuncture. It doesn't matter what form, electro, um, um, uh, needles, uh, lasers, all do the same. So why then does acupuncture work? Well, what do you mean, of course, by work? I mean, that's an important definition. I, when I say a, a process works, when penicillin works to cure syphilis, it kills the bacteria by messing with the cell wall. So for me, I know how penicillin works. How does, to my mind, when you have something working, it's altering the underlying physiology or anatomy of the problem at hand. That would be my definition of works. Um, and by this definition, acupuncture does nothing. But it is effective. Patients do have um, feel, uh, do have a good result of seeing an acupuncturist. Um, why do they do that? Because it does have perceived effects. And I think there's just some interesting studies. I can really talk for three hours on acupuncture. But some interesting studies I want to talk about that do cast some light as to how acupuncture has the effects that you see on people. And there's a bunch of interesting things. You know, it's kind of a Zen koan, I suppose. If a patient says they're better, are they not better? You know, one hand clapping. If a tree falls in the forest and it, no one around to hear it, does it make a sound? It does not. That was proven by Bob and Ray back in the 1950s, for those of you who are unaware of that. But there are a lot of things that can influence how people perceive pain in studies. Interestingly, there's a study that shows that the people who can, uh, mice that smell male have less, exhibit less pain. So being male, my one, I usually thought I just smelled bad. I usually thought my 17-year-old, who can really smell funky, um, would just, but it turns out it's an analgesic effect to smell a male. How your, how your observer, how the person in, uh, in gives you their acupuncture can interpret how you respond to pain. And I'm going to talk mostly about pain studies. But if you have a good facial expression and a good body uh, language, you're, the person you're dealing with is going to have le experienced pain less. And of course, touch is important in any medical therapy, except for perhaps the chiropractor who pops an inch above. I never understand how Reiki, Reiki works because you're not touching. But we are monkeys, and when monkeys groom each or apes, we are apes. And when apes groom each other, it's a relaxing process. And a lot of these things, you know, if you have a male acupuncturist touching you, you between the smell and the touch, you're probably going to feel better uh, on, on the process of that. But the most important, <laughs> you all know this one from uh, uh, Penn and Teller's Bullshit. That's actually not a magnet. That's a giant, uh, that's a downspout from, a, uh, from a, uh, a gutter system, bent into the shape of a magnet and painted like a magnet. The patient was told it was a magnet, the patient was told it was going to make her better, and she felt better for having that giant magnet put on them. Bigger is better. And what's really important, what's really curious about the acupuncture literature, which some of the stuff out there, is how important it is that belief in that you're going to have acupuncture is probably, and that it works, is probably the most important characteristic in whether or not acupuncture works for you. It's not the blockage of meridians, et cetera. It's your belief that what you're going to have is going to be an effective intervention, in this case, predominantly for pain. For example, in this particular study, it showed that um, it was expectation that they were going to get better that showed that the patient was going to have more response to their pain therapy which I think is quite interesting here in the acupuncture literature. And you find this consistently. That is the anticipation and that you think it's going to work, therefore it is going to work. And they found again in this particular study that, um, uh, that, that as long as the patient believed that it was acupuncture, it was going to have improvement. I always like the fact, uh, the second to the last sentence, an unknown characteristic of the treating practitioner predicts outcome. One would really wonder how this person interacted to get a better outcome than other people. Some people are better at interacting with patients than others. If you're really good at it, you'll probably have a better effect from your acupuncture than you would from other forms of uh, interventions. I really like this study that was out recently. I don't have a pointer. If you look at the, it, what they showed is that this is for, um, what was it for? It was for something. Pain. Okay. And you notice that if you were a believer, if you were a responder to acupuncture, you if you believed in acupuncture ahead of time, you responded to it for your pain. If you did not believe in acupuncture, 
you did not respond to it. But what was most interesting is that if you got an effect that you believed in, and the more you believed in it, the better effect you had. So you can see in the bottom graph how they, they separate out for electroacupuncture, so a different form. So in the, t in the middle graph, it showed that patients did better if they believed and not believed. They responded more if they believed and not believed. In the bottom one, it shows that the more to have sham acupuncture. In the bottom one, the more they believed in it over time, the better effect they had from pain, which I think is an interesting response. And this was also an interesting response where they told patients you were going to get the one. Yeah. They told they're going to stick them with needles. They said, we're going to stick you with a needle. It's going to be painful. And it hurt. And they told them we're going to stick you with needles. It's going to cure your pain. Same procedure. It cured their pain. So their expectation as to what that needle represented re resulted in their response to the acupuncture needle, which I think is really interesting. If you're going to get poked with a needle um, and you know it's going to be for pain, then you're going to hurt. I think they should use that in the blood drawing lab and tell every patient who's going to get their blood drawn, this is going to be a blood, this is acupuncture uh, blood drawing. And put the syringe on and say, this is going to make you better because you're getting an acupuncture treatment while we draw your blood. And all those people who are phobic about getting their blood drawn will probably do well. Same with giving shots to the, sh the shot phobic. You know, when I give my kids their vaccines, and they're all up to date on their vaccines, surprisingly. They say, oh, no, son, this is not a vaccine. It's acupuncture. And they'll probably do better with it. Um, and it's also interesting um, in th that this is the same study that they, the um, same similar study, where the expectation that it was going to be acupuncture, there's the one I want to do, is going, uh, go back, is going to be the same. It's very interesting that, oh, this is the cool one, all right? This was an interesting, even a more interesting study. They developed phantom acupuncture, all right? Not just sham acupuncture, phantom. They arranged it so the patient couldn't tell if they were getting a needle, but the person came up to them and did all the manipulations but didn't actually touch them. It was phantom acupuncture. And if you believe that the phantom acupuncture was effective, you had more effect than if you didn't, than you, than you did if you had uh, the fake, uh, sorry, real acupuncture. So I'm, I'm getting uh, incoherent up here. What happened, and so it's interesting that if a patient believed that the fa phantom acupuncture was effective, they had a variety of effects that were pretty much equivalent to real acupuncture. So believing that you were having acupuncture even when you weren't being touched, even when you weren't having any interaction that was actually messing with your meridians, you still had physiologic responses that were equivalent to, quote, real acupuncture. And it made a difference as to whether or not you were believed it or you didn't. So the NC were the not convinced, and the C were the convinced. And those who were convinced that they were having phantom acupuncture had more effects than those who were not convinced who had phantom acupuncture. I think this is really interesting, that just thinking that you're going to have acupuncture and you believe it's happening is enough to have you have a response to acupuncture. And you can see there was no difference in the response in various physiologic parameters as to if you're getting real acupuncture, phantom acupuncture, or phantom acupuncture and you didn't believe in it, although there's a little less effect if you didn't believe that you were getting phantom acupuncture, which I think is a really interesting result as to how interactions with people and interactions with patients, if they believe it's going to be effective, it's going to be effective. But this is the coolest stuff of all. Now, the phantom hand illusion I just learned about recently. You can see the lady there. Um, her real hand is over there and she can't see it. But she can see the rubber hand, fake hand. And if you touch her, in this case, her right hand and her fake hand at the same time, people incorporate the fake hand and they start to think it's their own. And if you do stuff to the fake hand, they will react as if you're doing it to their real hand. So you can, this is so weird, but you can fool people into thinking a rubber hand is their own hand and then do stuff to it and get reactions out of them. You can touch it with an ice, with a, with an ice cube. With a, with actually, not only can you touch it with an ice cube and they think they feel cold, you can touch it with a plastic fake ice cube to a plastic fake hand <laughs> and they will feel it as cold. Steve needs to do a whole lecture on this whole topic because 
this is just weird stuff if you ask me. I'm an ID doctor. This is just like science fiction to me. But what if you do acupuncture to a fake rubber hand? There's no meridians in there. There's no key in there. There's nothing in there. If you do acupuncture on a fake rubber hand, people respond to it. So they did this study where they did a variety of, of real and placebo acupunctures on a rubber hand. And they got a variety of responses. These are the different. Uh, they were either going to get real acupuncture or sham acupuncture and a fake hand, which is wild. And they responded to it with physiologic response. Not if they got fake or if they got real in a fake hand, they responded with a variety of physiologic processes, uh, uh, parameters, as if they were getting acupuncture, which is wild. And they say, well, it's because just the watching it was enough for them to get the physiologic response, which is just crazy if you ask me. But you can in induce the physiologic response of acupuncture in someone by doing their, by acupuncturing a fake hand with a, with a rubber hand illusion. But even more interesting is they took people that had the rubber hand, the fake hand illusion, and they did acupuncture in it, and they did it, and they stuck them in an MRI, FR, fMRI. And of course, you do that with everything. Everybody nowadays gets stuck in an MRI. And they had the same changes on the MRI in the brain from acupuncture on a fake hand as the same response you see when people get the rubber hand illusion, I should say, that people do when you acupuncture their real hand. So you get the same changes in your brain um, when you get acupuncture on a hand that's a piece of rubber that's not even connected to you, just wild, as opposed to giving it on your real hand. Now there are issues with fMRIs, we all know that. Um, and so they're, you know, they've done MRIs of dead salmon and they light up. So we know that occasionally you can have a positive fMRI when there's no brain function. Um, <laughs> be that as it may, I find the, two, uh, the, the, the three studies, on the two, one on phantom acupuncture and the two on acupuncture on a fake hand, to be really, really interesting insights into how people respond to the interaction of an acupuncturist, as it were, to get a response to their pain or whatever their medical therapy is. So, um, of course, we don't need no stinking reality, and the acupuncturists will say, no, it's magic, and we don't have science to do it. So, in summary, um, acupuncture doesn't work, and it's over and above the, the interaction of the, of the practitioner, and a, a positive interaction between the practitioner and the person receiving the acupuncturist. Um, it's toothpicks, it's, it's a, as Steve said and David said, it's a theatrical placebo. Uh, effect that people get. And that's all that acupuncture really is. is people thinking they are better when they are not. And I'm sure at midnight tonight, everybody that's drinking skeptically is going to be better looking and funnier than they were at 9 o'clock when it started. That is um, um, a guarantee. And what really is, is that what this, this really says is that the effect of acupuncture is you are, huh, you are creating your reality with your mind. <laughs> Chopra was right. <laughs> wow. No, sorry. Chopra's still full of shit. <laughs> uh, just a joke. So, but basically, like any placebo effect, like any interaction, what it is in the end is the patient believing them to be better when they're not. I know that sounds like I said earlier a Zen koan, but people are interacting with their practitioner with a variety of external influences to think their pain or whatever their process is uh, goes away. So that's the end of this talk. Uh, it's important to end on time so people can go for lunch. That's uh, actually it's a Photoshop. It's not really me. And I will end there and be happy. We'll answer questions later and don't forget to tweet to Hashtag SBM live. Thank you very much.